go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone, and good afternoon to those who are joining us via uh, live uh, Zoom. We are so glad to have you tuning into American Sign Language on the trail. Um, I'm excited to connect with you all and learn together today, and I hope that you're staying warm and dry. Since here in Central Oregon, we are getting some much needed rain right now. Um, I'm Jana Hemphill, and I'm the Outreach Manager at Deschutes Land Trust, and I'll be doing my best to try to facilitate the event this, this afternoon. Um, this event will actually be a little more interactive than our virtual offerings normally are, so I encourage you to uh, share your video. This will help when we begin practicing how to sign. In order to change your view, um, on the upper right corner of your screen, there is an option to be able to see only the person speaking, or you can switch to gallery view where you can see our entire group. Um, you are also currently muted and I encourage you to stay on mute as much as possible so unintended noises don't disturb others. But feel free to ask questions in the chat instead. Um, for those of you who are not yet familiar or need a refresher, the Deschutes Land Trust is a conservation organization in Bend, Oregon. We currently protect and care for more than 17,000 acres of critical wildlife habitat, incredible streams, and stunning natural beauty. If you're enjoying our virtual content like today's talk, please consider making a gift to the Land Trust. Your support conserves and protects the nature of Central Oregon. I'll put our donation link in the chat in a little bit. Um, there are also a few current Land Trust members joining us today, so I'd like to say hi to them and thank you so much for your continued support as you have helped us protect some truly incredible places. Um, finally, a note that our in-person walks and hikes are up and running, so be sure to check out our website um, and sign up to learn more about the natural world at one of our community preserves. And now, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our host today, Kara Frank. Kara is the Land Trust Outreach Associate. She is also a local adaptive outdoor instructor and loves camping, cycling, and spending time outside with her pup. Welcome, Kara. Hi, everyone. Can you guys try saying hello? Hi, I'm really excited to have you guys here today and to join me here. I'm gonna back up a little bit so you can see me signing a little better. And really, you know, just the last few years with sign language has really been a very exciting time for the deaf community just because technology has advanced recognition for the language and many so other ways. We're starting to see more sign language interpreters on stages, at concerts, you know, at mayor emergency announcements, and so much more. Actually, you know, at the last presentational in aggregation, it was actually sign language on the stage, and that's the first time ever for us to see sign on a national level. So it's been a really exciting time the last few years, especially for me and members of the deaf community. And so I'm really excited to have you guys here too as well. And you may have noticed that with the Chief Lantra, we've been starting to provide sign language interpreters during our Nature Night presentation and occasionally during virtual tours. And I thought, well, why not do you know, add some sign language and introduce that to the general public too as well. So that brings us here today to ASL on the trail. Can you try that? Trail. You take your both, both palms and the fingers are closed and they're facing together and they're kind of showing a whiny trail. Trail, so awesome. Now, one thing you might have noticed is that my speech does have an accent. And if you don't already know, I was actually born deaf. I was just born that way the cause is unknown. And I was raised with spoken language. And I wear a cochlear implant, which is a surgically implanted device. So with the cochlear implant, I receive auditory information and I learned how to lip read. So with all that together, I'm able to navigate in the hearing world. It wasn't until later in high school that I started learning sign language. And oh my gosh, that really opened up my world to a whole nother community. That I never really fully understood. And so nowadays I have one foot in the deaf community, one foot in the hearing community. And I have the tools for navigating the deaf and the hearing world. So I consider myself very fortunate to have those tools to navigate the two worlds. In many ways, I consider myself bilingual. And I do hope that ASL will become more integrated in today's 
mainstream society. So I'm excited to have you guys here just to learn maybe a thing or two, or maybe you already know some of the stuff I'm gonna mention. So today, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you a little bit of the lay of the land with ASL, and then we're gonna dive into some signs that may be relevant to you while you're on the trail. And then um, we'll wrap it up with an activity. We'll see how the activity works in the virtual world, because I've always done it in person. So this will be kind of a, you know, testing the ground. So hopefully it works. How many of you guys know some signs? <laughs> well, you know the sign for trail now. You know the sign for hello. And now you know I'm signing right now, but one thing to know is, is um, ASL, America's Sign Language, is actually not based on English. And so that misconception often invites a lot of misunderstanding in how the translation process works. And, you know, oftentimes it's believed that it's really easy, you know, just to provide a sign language interpreter and, you know, you're set. But actually there's more lake work that takes place because in reality, there's a lot of words in English that don't have signs for them. You know, like when I start working with the land trust, I start noticing that more and more, you know, there's a lot of signs about like ecology or the ecosystem or even more specifically, a key word what the chief land trust does, it's conserve. And that conservation doesn't really have a recognized sign. I've seen so many different ways it's been translated. You know, the safest way is to finger spell the word or you're signing each letter for, for conservation. I've seen some people sign it where it's the blend of two words to convey the concept of one. So like for conservation, I've seen people do save land. I've seen some people do cherish and protect. I've seen some interpreters even sign cherish and save. There's so many different variations and it really, really depends on who the audience is, how much they know. If it's maybe a new word to them, it's always best to think spell it. But if it's an interpreter working with me who already has the familiarity with that concept, they know they can blend two words and they know I will recognize what's been conveyed. So because ASL is not based on English, I'm actually signing more in English. I'm not signing to the true sense of ASL. It's really difficult to sign in ASL while speaking at the same time. So what you're seeing is a little different. And you know, a lot of things, um, it looks like we have maybe have one person from Texas and I think most other people are from the Northwest. Um, and one thing that we have in sign language, a lot of geographical locations don't have signs for them. The exception would be is if the deaf community there is really large, then they would have de developed a sign for that given location. But here in Central Oregon, the deaf community is really small. So we don't have signs for common names here like Deaf Choose River or Deaf Choose Counting. There's no sign for it. We have to finger spell it. Or even a really popular ski resort, Mount Bachelor. It doesn't have a recognized sign. I could sign bachelor, but that means I am single and available, which is not equivalent to the meaning of the mountain itself. And you know, me and my husband, he himself is deaf too as well. So when it took the two of us, we're signing. We hardly ever talk. And so when we're skiing together at Bachelor, you know, each cheerleader has his own name. We have Skyliner, we have Outback, we have Summit, and so much more. All those cheerleaders still have signs, but we have our own home signs. You would just see me use our home signs. So Summit, Outback, and more. So that way we don't have to think to spell it every time. And that's the beauty of sign language sometimes. You have no idea how many times I'm on the ski slope, wherever I'm up at the top and my husband below or vice versa, and I'm signing something from really far away. That's the advantage of sign language. You can sign from a distance without having to shout. But at the same time, I've gotten so many odd looks from people like going, who is this person and why is she just flapping her hands in the air without realizing that I'm actually having a conversation with someone farther down the hill, or even on the chair, look down at the bottom. 
that's the advantage of sign language. I love that. Something that you can utilize while you're out on the trail too. You know, you can sign from a distance without disturbing the animal that might be in the area without startling them. I like to think that my husband and I maybe have the depth advantage when we're hiking. Just maybe the animals don't hear us as well because we're not talking. I mean, maybe they might hear our feet walking, but we're not talking. So maybe we encounter a few more animals. Maybe, maybe I like to think we do. Now, one thing with ASL, you know, how many of you guys have seen sign language interpreters? Everybody said a sign language interpreter at some point in their life, wherever it's on TV, in person, a presentation, et cetera, et cetera. Did you notice by any chance their facial expressions? They're pretty expressive. Like American Sign Language is not only about the use of your fingers or your hands, like facial expression and the use of your body. It's just as important. And that sometimes interpreters become this like, you know, use sensation because of their facial expressions and whatnot. But what we're seeing is just another part of the grammar of the language. And so I just wanna provide you guys an example and maybe invite you to try it out too as well. So what you're gonna do is take your left dominant hand, you're gonna put it out in front of you, just kind of like flat, you know? So this is kind of like the horizon. This is not actually the sign for horizon, but we're just kind of using this as a placekeeper. And then take your other hand, it's kind of like your finger, you can kind of wiggle it if you want. They're gonna put it on top of the horizon. And now the palm, orientation is gonna be facing sideways, not facing out, facing sideways. And now this is gonna be like a placeholder for a creditor or some sort. You know, he just decided he's anxious. He's gonna move across. And my eye gaze is following the creditor. My eye gaze is part of the grammar. I'm showing with my eye gaze that the creditor is moving across the horizon. And now on top of that, with my facial expressions, I can also show how is the creditor feeling? You know, maybe the creditor is tired. I'm using my body and my facial expressions to try that. So I'd like to invite you guys again, try that and maybe show the creditor is tired, he's exhausted, he's angry, whatever you're feeling. Now, maybe the critter is really happy. I see somebody showing, somebody's really happy. The critter is happy. How would you show that? He's really happy. Okay, awesome. So, this is some examples of how the grammar can play a part just to use a body language and your eye gaze. And just really to better illustrate my point, I have a video that I would like to show you guys. It is a video by somebody who I consider a very amazing, talented actor. He has been, I think he's been with the National Deaf Theater for probably about 12 years now. And he has a, a video clip on Caterpillar, which is very appropriate for today's topic with ASL on the trail. So it's about a three minute clip. So Janet's gonna go ahead and pull that up so you can check it out. And then we can chat about it afterwards and see how well you can follow the video, no pressure. And I do wanna add that there's no sound to this video. So don't expect any sound for the next three minutes.
Do you guys understand that? Yeah. A lot of the things that he was using were not actually recognized signs. They were more of place keepers or gestures to convey a story. So what you were seeing was more of what we call ASL poetry. He saw his, his heart beating. He saw the caterpillar. That is actually the sign of the caterpillar. Can you try that? He actually used the sign for tree. He's like, you have to advise it again for tree. And one thing with sign language, you can use your dominant hand for tree. You can use your other hand too. It really depends on what your preference is. So, so tree. So we had the caterpillar. We had the tree. Did you see his eye gaze? His eye gaze was so intense, showing everything. And that facial expression, oh my gosh. Another sign that he used that is recognized is butterfly. Do you guys try that one? You take your hands and you kind of wrap the thumbs around. Keep the fingers closed. You can move it. He was showing kind of the butterfly flying away too as well, just kind of more of a expression to show that just that grace in the air. Oh, I love watching butterflies in the fields. So while we're here today, you know, like I mentioned earlier, that one perk with sign language is that it's silent. And so when you're on the trail, you know, maybe you encounter an animal or something and you may not want to use your voice. You wanted to show your hiking buddy what you see. And so we're going to go ahead and practice some animal signs. So I'm going to show you guys, try to practice, and maybe we'll review them a little bit, and then we'll play a little activity with it. And now some of the signs I'm going to show you, a lot of animal signs are pretty iconic. And when I say iconic, I mean that by the sign really looks like the object that we're referring to. And now America Sign Language, only about roughly about 30% of America Sign Language is actually iconic. The rest of the language, you know, I could show you the sign and you could ask me, why is that the sign? I wouldn't be able to tell you, you know, that's just how things have developed and evolved and became what they are today. The same thing with English words. Some English words, we don't know what the origin of it was. But with the animal signs, they're pretty self-explanatory because they're iconic. Are you guys ready? All right. Hey. All right. So I figure we'll go ahead and start with um, a pretty easy one. At least I consider it pretty easy. You take your open palms, fingers are spread out, and you put your thumb on your forehead and you pull it away. Maybe you might already know what it is. If you don't, it is deer. You're showing the antlers coming out. And you usually just do that one time. I'm just kind of repeating myself to show the demonstration of it. Maybe you see a herd of deer, so you could show that repeatedly and change the position of your body. Like there's so many deers everywhere. Like check it out, like good point. You can show like all those deers out there. All right, now another sign that have, you take your dominant hand and fingers are closed. The thumb is not sticking out, it's tucked in and you wiggle it and go forward. It is something that you would see in the water, fish. Fish. And you can do the same thing with their rising. They can actually become a water surface. You can show the fish swimming underwater. Maybe the fish is jumping out of the water. You can have fun with it. All right, so so far we have deer, we have fish. You're gonna have to remember these things that I am gonna put you guys to the test. So yeah. All right, now this one is not as iconic, but a good one to know. You take your open palms, fingers are spread out. You cross your hands over, not on top of your shoulder, but just kind of slightly below your shoulders, kind of like you're giving yourself a hug. And you squeeze those fingers just a little bit. And you repeat it two times-ish. That's the sign for bear. Bear. And that can be a black or brown bear. It's kind of like those claws, like bear. Definitely not something you want to encounter really close on the trail. And this one is one of my favorites. 
just because you can have a lot of fun with signing it. Grab it. You take your two fingers, put them together, kind of like Boy Scouts Otter, turn it backwards, put them in the side of your forehead, and the palm should be facing backwards, and then tuck those in. And now sometimes, you know, the rabbit can be alert, right? They can be alert. They can hear something. Maybe they got startled. Or maybe they're like, mm, not so sure about what I think about this environment. Or they could be bouncing up and down. You can have fun with that. <laughs> I love it. So rabbit. So we got deer, we have fish, we have bear, we have rabbit. And then another one that's pretty common, you might see this critter just eating away that wood, making it home, beaver. You see the teeth, it's like those two fingers, we bend them together, and it's like she went away at the tree. You want to make sure you put that in front of your mouth just to kind of convey that that's the, that's the location of the sign. So beaver, if you move it away from your face, it may mean something else. You really have to think about the location of your sign. Make sure you keep them to that same location. Okay, so you guys ready for this little game? Do you think you know all the signs right now if I were to throw it out? Let's try it. All right, let's see if can we can you guys show me how would you sign rabbit? Yay, A plus. All right, how about fish? Yeah, make sure that palm is facing sideways, fish. Otherwise, you have a dead fish that just kind of flapping on the ground. Not a sight we want to see. So yeah. All right, and let's see, we got beaver. Man, you guys are good. Yeah, beaver. Make sure you put that in front of your mouth too. Awesome. You guys think you could do a little more? Okay, all right, we're gonna add on a few more of them. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move over into animals that you might see in the air. You might have a bird. You take the forefinger and your thumb, and you just put it in front of your mouth. It's got its little peckers, a bird. And now, you know, with eye gaze, you know, it could be like a baby bird looking up, you know, at his mom. Or it could be, you know, the mama bird looking down, you know, kind of feeding the baby bird. And that's the thing with the eye gaze, you can have fun with that. And then we have the eagle, not to be confused with the ball eagle, which is actually, sorry, the eagle. Yeah, I was thinking of a hawk. You get the eagle, so you take your four fingers, your dominant hand, and tuck that finger in a little bit and put it in front of your nose. So you kind of tap your nose a little gently, eagle. And to just show that really long beat that they have, you know, so eagle. And then the last, one we have is an owl. Take your O and show me the letter O. Put it in front of your eye and just kind of twist them a little bit. <laughs> owl. All right, so let's try to see. Let's review that real quick. So if I was to say there's an eagle in the air. Eagle, you can point and you can with your eye gaze show there's an eagle. It's an eagle. And that eagle is coming down, swooping, and ready to get a fish. Yeah, we got a fish, and maybe the eagle comes down. All right, let's try to say we have an owl. Owl. <laughs> And he spots a rabbit. Yeah, a rabbit. So the owl is looking around and he spots a rabbit. And the rabbit looks up, maybe runs away. 
All right, how about birth? Nice, bird. Ooh, we do know caterpillar. Caterpillar is the bird. Seed the caterpillar. Nice. I think there is one, two more signs I haven't touched on yet. I cannot think of a story to incorporate the two of them. So I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> we have the sign for deer. And then we also have the sign for beaver. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna wrap it up with a quick little activity. And now we have five people in this room. And that includes the two that are sharing a screen. So each person, you're gonna pick one sign that we've just done, one of the animal signs, and that's gonna become your character. So let's go around in a circle or I'm gonna call on each person and you're gonna show me the character that you're gonna pick. So for example, if I wanted to be a fish and my name got called out, I would show the group that I am gonna be the fish. Then I'm gonna call on to the next person. Okay, so what we're gonna do, you know, we have the owl, you have the beaver, you have the deer, and you have the bear in this group and the fish. I didn't know what say that. So what you're gonna do is I'm gonna start I have to show my character first. I am the fish. And then I'm gonna call on to the next character I know in this group. So I'm gonna say I'm the fish. I'm calling on to the beaver. And then the beaver is gonna go, oh, that's me. They're gonna sign their character and they're gonna call on to another character in the group. All right, you guys ready? Let's see if we can keep the ball moving relatively quick. <laughs> All right, good job, you guys. Good pat in the back. Nice. That was beautiful. I really like the use of facial expressions that people were using and just really the attention to detail you're trying to put into the shape of your hand, where your hand's facing, the location of it, because all those little things are aspects of grammar with America's Sign Language. And just maybe when you're out on the trail, if you see a deer now, you can just tap your hiking buddy. Look, look. Or a bear, hopefully not. That might be pretty scary. Beaver, a bird, it's a pretty common occurrence. Maybe an eagle. So the review we've done. What's your favorite one? So with sign language on the trail, I'd like to encourage you guys to try practicing, you know, in any language, the best way with learning the language is to repeat it. Just keep using it, keep practicing, committed to memory. And if you live in this area, and if you happen to see a deaf couple signing on the trail, most likely it's probably me and my husband. Well, maybe somebody else, who knows? 
And one thing with trails is we love hiking on wider trails just because we can walk next to each other, see each other, and converse in sign language. If a trail becomes narrow, all of a sudden we're behind each other. If we can no longer see each other. We might have a sign above our shoulders. Hey, you see what I'm saying here? Okay, yeah. And hope that I don't trip over a walk while I'm signing like that. But really, regardless of each person's background in the language, you know, whether you're a novice, intermediate, or maybe fluid in the language, it is expected of any signer, regardless of their background, to adjust their signing to match like the reader's ability level. So the person who's reading my signs, it is expected of me to change the pace, how I deliver my information, maybe the width of my signs. So if you're a novice signer and you're like, oh my God, I see some deaf people and I want to, I don't know, should I say hi? Please go ahead and say hi. You know, like it is expected of anyone, regardless of their background, is to modify their signing to accommodate all the people who are conversing. So really, I just challenge you guys, use your signs going forward. And if you'd like to keep learning, I can definitely set out some apps that I would recommend for continuing to learn signs that you can use maybe when you're on the trail. So I'd like to go ahead and just open it up and see if anybody has any wonderings or questions or maybe another sign or two you would like to cover before we wrap things up. You can turn on your microphone or you can type if you like. Ooh, alligator. That is a good one to know. And that's also a very iconic sign. You take your hands, usually your arms are pretty spread out and you're showing the jaw, you know, alligator. And now sometimes I may not have that much space in front of me. So it's okay to make it small if you need to, you know, if it doesn't feel natural to put your arms all straight out, you know, like maybe a smaller space, you know, I'm in the bus, my seat's short, I can still say alligator. Okay. Uh, so there actually isn't a sign for elk, but normally what people do with the sign for deer is to modify it, to make it a little bit, you know, to mimic the horn of the elk, or maybe even in the moose, you know, like the moose tend to have a little more curled. So some people kind of curl it. And for an L, they kind of make it just, just a little bit larger, you know, but usually you finger spell it. And it's only three letters, so E-L-K. I have a type question Jana was asking about. I'm curious about the word for binoculars because I feel like it would be similar to owl, but maybe it's not an icon sign. And that's a really great question because the two are really, really similar. And binoculars actually just kind of stick it a little bit out farther. So you can kind of see the distance from my face, you know, so it's kind of, we might play around a little bit with, you know, kind of showing, but owl is like right on your face, mm -hmm. you know, but if you were to show just two signs right next to each other, it may look a little confusing, but more often you're already going to be referring to the concept or you may have a pair of binoculars or you're pointing up into a tree going, you know, and people are probably going to be able to connect the dots that there's not a pair of binoculars in the tree. <laughs> I saw um, another one come up in the chat and there's two signs for turtle. It just really depends on the type of turtle that you're talking about. If you're talking about like a really large turtle, like a sea turtle, then you normally take your left top of the hand and if fingers are closed, thumb stick it out. The other hand is the same shape. Put your thumb of the hand on top and move your thumbs forward. So it's like, it's a turtle kind of swimming in that water. So if we're talking about like a sea turtle out in the ocean, more often that's a sign that we use. But we're talking about a small turtle or maybe a pet turtle or maybe a turtle you might see in the pond or something a little more in a more regular occurrence out on a trail. The new scent, I love this one. It's actually one of my favorites. I'm so excited it came out. <laughs> you take your dominant hand and it's a closed fist, so the thumb is just sticking up a little bit. Take your left thumb in hand and cup it over. It's like the shell 
Yeah, the turtle's head sticking out. His head is just wiggling about right there. So you got turtle. Yeah. The kids love this sign, right? If you work with kids or if you have kids, use this sign and they will go wild. Rock, we have take your dog in hand, kind of like a closed fist underneath your chin and bounce out your two fingers. Rock. Take to show the tongue, kind of like coming in and out. And it's sideways just because it doesn't feel very natural for us to do it like this. So it's just more naturally done like this. So fuck. Covered a lot of ground. And don't be, feel free to, you know, to reach out anytime. You know, you want to learn some more or you want some materials or some online resources that would be worth looking out. Let us know. And we can definitely share and point you in the right direction. Thank you so, so much, Kara. That was so amazing. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we hope to see you again to learn about uh, the nature of Central Oregon from the comfort of your home. Um, and in addition, if you'd like to get more involved with the Land Trust, you can subscribe to our e-newsletter, check out our upcoming events, and make a donation to our work at DeschutesLandTrust.org. So thank you so much, and we'll see you all soon.